Hey, Corey. Um, I guess we're going to be talking about um, Avita Ed today and a little bit about um, moving it from teaching it in person, which is how I've been doing it, to teaching it online. Um, and I know you've had a lot more experience with that. Uh, so I was hoping that you could share with me some of um, the work that you've been doing. Cool. Yeah, happy to. Um, you know, first off, I would recommend that you think about what sort of technologies are going to be required here. So Avita Ed runs in a web browser. You only need a web browser. It's totally free to use. Um, I highly recommend using Google Docs, um, Google Sheets, those different Google Suite applications. Um, and that's pretty much all you need in order to get going and use Avita Ed uh, online for an online only course. Um, you should also really carefully think about what your situation is, how you want to structure the course, if you want to have your students working together synchronously or asynchronously, if you want to have um, you, you know, yourself, the instructor, or, or your TAs be with the students the entire time synchronously online, um, how long each of those different class sessions are online, you know, 50 minutes, up to three hours, however you want to do that. Um, but really, Avita Ed is super adaptable. You can really um, slot in these different curriculum pieces in a whole bunch of different ways. Cool. Um, so should we take a look at, um, at like the introduction and in exercise one and think about how um, that happens and, and share with, um, can you share with me how that, that would work? Yeah, I'm happy to. Here, let me share my screen. Okay, so here we have Evita introduction activity. Um, and right off the bat, notice here that I have instructions for how students can submit their Google Doc. Um, for completing this activity, they can just fill out a Google form here and give us the link for their own Google document. Um, the way we have this set up here is we have sharing settings so that anyone can view uh, and students need to make their own copy of the file and then they can edit it directly there. Also here we have students working um, with their own files. They're all completing these by themselves. Although uh, the way I've structured this, I'm intending for students to be working in a group of like three or four students synchronously. At, at some point during the week, and um, and I'll check in on them every five minutes or or so, or not every five minutes, every like twenty minutes for five minutes or something. Um, but I did design these right now for this course so that if a student needed to work asynchronously, they totally could. Um, but yeah, so definitely check out this introduction exercise. I really recommend that everyone starts here. This will introduce you to the Avita Ed system, the digital organisms themselves how they work, a little bit about their genetics, their genotype, phenotype, and about their digital environment and how you can, um, you know, briefly do some basic experiments with them. So that's the introduction. Cool. And I think that's one of the great advantages of the Avita Ed program is that uh, it's really easy to use um, online. Uh, it runs in a browser so that, it, you know, it doesn't require folks to download special programs. And I find that my students generally don't have any problems accessing it and using it in um, both in, you know, in the classroom, but then also now um, as they do research projects doing it um, online. <clears throat> Yeah, I have a note about that too. In case anyone's worried about internet connectivity problems, you really only need the internet to load the Avita Ed webpage just at the very beginning. And then once that webpage is loaded on your computer, you don't need internet at all. So you only need internet for a br very brief window of time to load the web page initially, and then it'll all be running on your computer, which is great for internet problems. Um, it also means that the program is running directly on your computer. So students with much quicker computers um, will have the program run much more quickly than students on a yeah. tablet or on a like five-year-old laptop or something. Just something to keep in mind. Yep. <clears throat> Great. Um, so, and I really like, once the students start getting into the exercises, they start collecting data and sharing their data. Uh, and I, in, in particular, I think one of my favorite exercises is one where if, even though it's super basic and simple, it just gets at some really um, fundamental concepts related to the random nature of mutations. Yeah. Um, yeah. So exercise one is a great place to start at, right after the introduction activity. Um, and he, here again, we're using Google Docs, same idea, Google link submission form. Students are completing this individually. And some other features about Google Docs that are, are really nice to take advantage of is, for example, here in exercise one, we have these different plots, these different figures. 
we want students to draw their predictions on these figures. And usually, you know, with a, a pen and piece of paper, this is a really simple task. They just write directly on these axes. Here online, it's um, slightly less easy, but still pretty straightforward. And we have directions right here of how you can do that in Google Docs. Let me just show you that real quick. So I'm using Google Drawing. I can just paste the exercise, the or sorry, the image. And then we can just like, you know, draw our ideas directly on these axes, whatever we want. That's great. I think that's been one of the biggest challenges in moving to an online environment is taking all of those active learning activities that you would do in the classroom and thinking about how to manage that online. So this is great. Yeah. And then, so in any of these exercises, of course, we have this experimental protocol and students are going to follow this protocol, answer some questions. There's tables here where they can collect and enter their own data. And then we also want to share this data. Um, so how do you usually do this in person? How do you usually collect and share these data? Um, so, well, so when we're doing it in person, I, I make use of Google Spreadsheets. Um, but generally, um, I give students like a day when they have to have the data uploaded and then we sort of separately take a look at the data analysis. So um, it's a little bit easier to keep them accountable. Um, I also give them points for completing their data collection um, and entering their data into spreadsheets. Yeah, and we do that in a similar way here. Um, so we have a Google spreadsheet here where they can come and enter their data that they've collected. Uh, we have some examples and then we have a bunch of different students entering their own data. Um, and so this is a really great way to collect data just like we normally do in the in-person um, mm -hmm. experience that you were talking about there. Um, but then, you know, I kind of want to have a range of students' experiences and in interacting with the course. Um, again, I think Evita Ed works best for a synchronous learning environment with you know small group activities where students are working together at the same time. But I want to be flexible enough for this online class here to um, have students be able to work asynchronously if they need to or they really want to. And in order to facilitate that, since um, I, I want them to be able to look at the data and then interact with that without necessarily having to come back and you know talking with me about it if they can't for some reason, I have them fill out this Google form right here. And this Google form asks them you know just some very basic questions um, completely anonymous form here, but, but they always respect this, like a, the honor system here. So after they collect all of their data and talk about it with their group members, if they have group members, and um, they're ready to go look at the class data set, they just check those boxes, press submit, and then this Google form here gives them a link to a full class-wide data set where we can look at a whole bunch of different students' data, um, both for this lab section and across a whole bunch of other students' data that we've collected before. Um, to get a much larger sample size. And so let me show you what that looks like. So here's like one lab section, it's 18 to 20 students, all of that data. And this is set up that we can, you know, copy and paste data into as we're going along. If we're doing this synchronously, I can paste their data in immediately. Asynchronously, I can come back to it some other point and paste that data into, or they can just look at an example lab section from like earlier in the week or whatever. And these we have figures here uh, made from that lab section data. And then we also have a big course-wide data set with hundreds and hundreds of students now. And get a much better sample size here with these figures. So just like in exercise one, they were predicting those relationships on these figures. Here we have a large sample size. Um, wow, 909 replicates already. And so we have quite a lot of data that we're working with. Pretty cool. And so someone interested in using this could go to the CUBE's website and access the Google Docs that we've created and download them and then have access to them. And the great thing about all of those Google data analysis forms is that everything, the analyses are all there, you just enter the data. Um, so you, you as an instructor aren't trying to figure out how to construct the analyses yourselves. We've, um, we've, we're, we've provided that for you. I think for me, that's been really helpful because um, it just saves a lot of time. Yeah, and Avita Ed can, again, fit into your course in many different ways. Um, so go check out that introduction, uh, see how it can fit into your class. Um, 
these activities take slightly longer online than they do in person. So maybe like an hour and a half, um, 45 minutes to an hour and a half maybe per exercise for students to work together while they're doing it. Um, some of them are shorter, definitely within an hour. Cool. Great. 